Hi, I'm Gabrielle Westwood, and this is Dying Journey number two. Hello, my historical fashion friends. In today's episode, we will be talking about my woe dying experiment. This did not turn out how I hoped. I was really anticipating a lovely blue, pastel blue color, and uh, let me say, I did not get that. If you like dyeing experiments, be sure to subscribe to my channel as there will be a lot more to come, especially since uh, this color didn't turn out how I wanted it to, and I now have to try a different dye to get something a little more vibrant for my secret project that I'm making for Foundations Revealed. Also, be sure to give this video a like because apparently that makes it more visible. Don't give it a thumbs down. <laughs> so, before I show you... So before I show you the final product, we will take a look at the process that I used to dye this fabric. Okay, so here is the fabric before I dyed it. It wasn't pure white. It's more of a oatmeal color. Um, I know that this is probably one of the biggest factors that led to the non-blue result as it was already warm toned. Uh, looking back now, I'm seeing that that's probably what happened. Now I've got my pot of water and I read some instructions that said it would be better to mix the cream of tartar and the alum in some boiling water first before adding it to the pot to make sure it's thoroughly dissolved. So that's just what I'm doing here. Um, please admire my super exact measurements. Um, a pile on the spoon is a, what I'm going to call this. I definitely need to get a scale, but I I just haven't, so I've been sort of looking at the package, seeing what the whole amount on the package is, and then trying to visually imagine how much of it I've used in comparison to that amount. Probably would be 100% easier if I just buy a scale. But I've been spending a lot of money on fabrics and materials for my Foundations Revealed contest piece, so I will be probably getting a scale in a few months' time. Um, <laughs> so this is the second time I'm recording this audio. Something strange happened to my file, and after the first minute the audio was completely corrupted. Right, now I'm putting the fabric in the mordant water. I left this in the pot overnight, then rinsed it out. Now it's the next day, and I'm making the woad dye bath. As soon as the powder hit the water, I realized I should have made a paste, but I didn't. So now I have to try to stir this and dissolve the powder for about 20 minutes while the temperature rose. I got this powder from the Woolery, and it didn't come with any instructions, so I contacted customer service, but they responded that none of them actually dyed fabric, so they didn't have any advice. At a certain point, I gave up mixing and just put the fabric in. I got really nervous that the blue powder was going to leave spots on the fabric, but in the end it didn't. It took about four hours for any noticeable change to start to take effect. I was pretty panicked about this. <laughs> I also added a non-mordanted handkerchief, and my general opinion is that this woad powder acted a lot more like a bluing agent that you might use to make yellow fabrics look more white than actually making it blue. If I was doing this again, I would probably buy about five times the amount of powder I used in this experiment. But at $26 for an ounce, I don't know that I'll be doing woad again soon. After the first rinse, all the color washed out completely, so I put the fabric back in the dye bath for another night. The water had turned yellow, so I added a little oxygen by mixing it back and forth. I don't know if I should have done this or if I should not have done this. After another night, it looked a little more blue and I had hope, but again, most of the color washed out. When you see it in the light, it's 
basically completely gray and just all the warm tones were neutralized. And here it is! It's, um, gray. It's definitely like a, a gray color and not blue. Not at all blue. If anyone does know what happened other than uh, there just not being enough powder, I didn't really understand how much volume there would be with one ounce. Like in my mind, I can't imagine. Cause some things are lighter than others. And I was like, oh, maybe it'll be a lot, but it, I should have gotten more, but it was very expensive. And I didn't want to spend a lot of money. So I guess we won't be getting blue uh, for my project. Uh, my next dye project is gonna be juniper berries. And I'm gonna be trying it with and without an iron mordant. So I'm gonna do one with alum and one with iron and see which color I like the best and then use that for my super secret project. Hopefully I get some really good colors from that because I have a lot of juniper berries and uh, I think it's going to be a better ratio of dye stuff to fabric volume. I think this is going to become some sort of, I don't know, maybe a cloak. I am not positive yet. It's kind of itchy. And there's like some random stuff woven in. Like when I was looking, I was like, is this like a twig? Uh, <laughs> it was like, I can't find it right now, but there's like, I guess, oh, here's one. Yeah, I think it's like some sort of plant material that probably didn't get completely washed out of the fleece and uh, is still here. It's very rough. Uh, maybe it would be good for like a cloak, maybe, or like a very, um, lower class character who only gets the last of the dye bath remnants for their fabrics. I definitely still have a lot of medieval projects I'm working on and uh, just, I, I keep having ideas of medieval projects that I want to do and I'm like I can't spend all my time just doing medieval projects because I'm trying to go throughout history and not just have an entire wardrobe of curls. My next video is going to be on tablet weaving which is my new hobby so <laughs> I'm gonna show you how I made a makeshift loom from two dining chairs, some dumbbells, and a rolling pin. That's right. We're just crafting it up in here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. I feel like I'm like Gandalf. I feel like I'm like Gandalf the Grey right now. You shall not pass! Little old grandma. Does anyone actually know like an old person who talks like that? Because that's like an old, old, a stereotypical like I'm a high school theater actor playing an old person voice. But it's like I don't, I don't even know. I know a lot of old people, and I don't, I don't know any old people who talk like that. So weird.